Hi, in this video, I am going to show you how to solve linear programming problems uh, in R. I'll also give a brief introduction to what uh, linear programming is all about, and we'll see how to solve uh, these problems uh, in R. So the outline for this session is I'll first talk about uh, what is linear programming. Uh, many of you might be uh, uh, very familiar with uh, linear programming. I'll just give you a very uh, brief idea uh, about what linear programming is all about. Um, and then talk about what, what are objective functions, what are const constraint, and how we can use uh, these concepts to be able to solve some of the very interesting uh, real world problems. And then we'll talk about uh, real world problems. We'll take an industry problem and we'll solve using, uh, you know, R. We'll, we'll formulate the problem and we'll solve it using R. And you can actually relate uh, to some of the problems that you might be facing in your respective uh, domain. Okay, so you can make use of uh, the tools and techniques that you'll be learning in this session. And then we'll talk about what R package is to be used. And, and finally, we'll solve uh, the linear programming problem using R. And I'll talk about what, what are the industrial uses of linear programming and how we can... Uh, how we can you know make the best use of these tools and techniques. Remember, this uh, particular uh, you know concept is part of uh, the applied mathematics uh, uh, domain. Uh, people in statistics do also learn uh, linear programming, um, but basically it is attributed to the field called operation research. Okay, so people who are uh, already uh, familiar with uh, what operation research is. They would be very comfortable with uh, LPP. LPP stands for Linear Programming Problems. Okay, so people who have done industrial engineering, they would also be very familiar. Uh, people with statistics and engineering background must also be very familiar with, uh, you know, LPP. But I'll keep it very simple uh, because I assume that the audience for this session is um, is not very familiar with LPP. So I'll take a very, uh, very, uh, you know, not so technical, um, uh, you know, session. It would be more of uh, the uses of LPP rather than just learning the theoretical aspects of it. So, what is uh, linear programming? Well, linear programming is a mathematical technique. So, that's one thing to note. This is one mathematical technique for maximizing or minimizing a linear function. Okay. And we'll see what a linear function is of several variables, okay, such as output or cost. We'll understand this definition in detail. So we'll just talk about few things that I have highlighted here. One is maximizing, the other one is minimizing. So when we talk about maximizing and minimizing, we are essentially optimizing, right? We are essentially optimizing, okay? And many a times we are required to do so because uh, that is what we want. Say, say, for instance, in, in a company, we want to maximize profit and we want to minimize what? Loss, right? Or minimize uh, cost, right? So this is what we want, okay? So that's exactly is the starting point of... Um, a linear programming problem that we want something to be minimum we want something to be maximum and what is that we need to minimize and and maximize well that would be a linear function or a non-linear function of several variables okay and what the differences are well in the linear function would lead to something like this a function f is is a function of x you know you take the value of x f f of x is let's say you know let's say uh, it's uh, okay 3x okay 3x plus 2 so this is uh, this is a linear function well don't uh, I, I you know I, i've taken a example to uh, you know demonstrate it's not uh, it's not what we are going to optimize, okay? But this is just a linear function, and you can have non-linear function also, which will not uh, take a, a linear form, okay? So LPP deals only with linear functions, so that's uh, uh, that's why we call it as linear optimization. Uh, 
that could also be non-linear optimization. We will not get into that. We will only go into linear optimizations. Okay. So this is what is clear that we are uh, interested in either minimizing or maximizing. One of the reasons for the uh, you know, large popularity of solving some of these problems using uh, linear programming is that um, if we can take any situation which uh, involves minimization or maximization and we would be able to uh, solve it using uh, linear programming and it's much easier rather okay so one example of it uh, you might have heard about linear regression and if you have gone through some of my videos you know there are many uh, videos in which i have talked about linear regression logistic regression or for that matter many other regressions so in these regressions we have uh, you know minimized the cost function right we minimize the cost function or rather if you uh, you know take from the point of view of econometrics or statistics we minimize the uh, the residual right sum of the residuals right uh, square of the uh, sum of the square of the residuals right uh, residual sum okay so that's what we minimize in regressions right uh, minimize uh, the function okay uh, so we use um, optimization for that, not necessarily LPP, but we use optimization. That's you know one of the major use we can relate to because we have learned so much about uh, linear regression uh, and many other type of regressions. So where are we going to use this in real world? Well, we're going to use this in maximizing profit, minimizing cost. And that happens in many manufacturing companies, how much to produce, uh, you know, given certain constraints, how much to, uh, you know, store in the, uh, in the uh, inventory and so on. Okay, how much to have inventory, how much to have, how many shop floors will be there, how many, um, you know, warehouses are to be there. And then it's also used in production planning, uh, pricing of products is used a lot, it's used in supply chain management. Uh, you know, it's used in uh, military, military activities, okay, uh, and so on, okay. So there are several real-world uses of linear programming that you can use. So here is the theoretical aspect of linear programming. Uh, so as you have seen, uh, we are uh, we are concerned with uh, a function, with a linear function, and we also are concerned with uh, a set of constraints okay so every linear programming problem will have uh, two things at least one is um, uh, the function to be optimized or to be either minimized or maximized and a set of constraints so here is an example we have this function so g is a linear function of several variables x1 uh, c2 x2 up to you know n number of things okay so x1 and x2 are known as uh, the decisions variables which we want to you know find out okay z is yet not known to us we want to maximize z or minimize j okay and c1 c2 are the constants already given to us we know this a priori then we have a constraint that we want to maximize g with respect to certain number of constraints and these constraints are also in equation form either it is going to be equal to something or less than something less than equal to something that would be the case so this is uh, a constraint that you know the linear combination a linear product of uh, the a11 x1 a1 to x2 should be less than or equal to b1 so this is one constraint so given this constraint we have to maximize this given the second constraint we have to maximize this we have to take all the constraint at uh, into consideration before uh, finding out what is the maximum value of g okay so that is the layman point of view understanding what linear programming problem is the mathematics behind uh, you know solving uh, an optimization problem is of course a uh, lot different and lot uh, difficult to understand but this is basically the idea behind lpp problem okay so what, uh, just trying to understand what these uh, variables are in the previous slide so uh, the objective function is the this is um, objective function what we have seen is nothing but g that we have seen 
is a is a, is a combination of decisions variable x. Okay, so the x are decisions variable. So you just have to uh, remember this because these things, these variables are to be found out from optimizations, and they are always associated with uh, some of the cost uh, efficient um, uh, CJ. We're calling it CJ. So and CJ, uh, you know, the constant values are given to us. Okay, and then we have set of m constraints which uh, are taken into consideration while minimizing or maximizing okay and uh, we might have boundary conditions for the decisions variable like many cases where you know decisions variable have to be positive uh, so these might be a uh, few other constraints there. okay we'll take an example to understand it better because theory is always difficult to understand without uh, you know taking or an example so uh, we'll take an example. Uh, now, another thing that I like to introduce to you that LPP problems can be solved by using a number of uh, uh, number of techniques, mathematical tools. And one of the way that we can use is the simplex method, which is a very popular one. We'll use this for this particular illustrations, and there are several other uh, techniques that one can use to uh, you know solve LPP problems. So here is an example. A small business sells two products. So we have got two products. You know, we call that as product one and product two. Each ton of product one consumes 30 working hours. Each tons of product two consume 20 working hours. Okay. So we have got product one and we have got product two Product 1 consumes how much hours? 30 and product 2 consumes 20 hours. The business has a maximum of 2,700 uh, 2, hours. So that's the maximum the business, the factory can spend in terms of in order to produce uh, product 1 and product 2. So that's one constraint already we given to right? Constraint is nothing but a limitation or uh, a cap on something or a limitation on something. Okay, so working hours for a period, uh, period considered. As for machine hours, each ton of product one and uh, two consumes five and ten machine hours respectively. So the machine hour that is required uh, is five and ten. Remember, these are uh, you know man hour, man hours, the people who are working on this, and the machine hour are respectively five and ten. Okay, this is man hour, this is machine hour. Okay. That's the difference. Okay. Now, given to given given uh, these are information regarding product one and product two, and there are 80, 850 machines are available to us. So that's another constraint. So we have a constraint on uh, the manner, which is two thousand and seven hundred, and we have also a constraint on the machine R, uh, R which is eight fifty. Each ton of product one is uh, twenty million dollar of profit, while product two is a sixty million dollar of profit for each ton. So for each ton, we have the profit in place. You know, so I guess the problem is already now clear. So we are trying to, you know, uh, maximize profit here, right? That's the problem we have with us. For technical reasons, the firm must produce minimum ninety five tons. So that's another constraint. So the minimum number of product one plus product two should ideally be 95 or more so that's one requirement from the business side so this is a target to be met at any cost that's another uh, constraint we need to know how many tons of product one and product two must be produced to maximize total profit so here is what is our main agenda so we need to maximize total profit uh, and the question that has been asked to us is how many number of product one and product two are to be produced to maximize profits given the constraint that we have talked about given the information that we have been given okay so we have the constraint with us and we have a clear objective given to us that we need to maximize profit so just tell us how many product uh, to be manufactured and uh, how many of them are going to be product one and how many of them are going to be product two so the decision variable for us 
is the number of product 1 and number of product 2. Or we call it as let's say x1 and we call this as x2. So how what is should be x1 values and what should be x2 value? Okay. Now let's formulate it formally and we'll get a better hold. X1 is the number of tons produced or sold by product 1. So that's one thing we'll assume. X2 is the number of tons to be produced. Okay, so we want X1 tons to be for product 1 and X2 tons to be for product 2. The cost coefficient of these products uh, of these variables are 20 and 60. We have been given, right? If we look at the problems, you know, we have 20 hours. Sorry. Um, yeah. So the cost coefficient, as in uh, the profit that is made from product 1 is 20 million dollar and it's 60 million dollar from product 2. So the cost coefficients are 20 and 60. Remember C1 and C2 we talked about in the uh, definition. That's exactly what it is. Therefore, the objective function is defined multiplying each of these variables and its corresponding coefficients. So objective function, if, if, if we just define as G, is equal to uh, 20x1 plus 60x2. So that's exactly the uh, uh, objective function. We want to maximize profit, right? So G is nothing but your profit, right? So what is 20? 20 is the number of millions you are making from one ton of product one. Okay, so total profit from product one is 20 into x1 because x1 is the number of tons of product one that you are making, right? When you multiply them, you get the total profit from x1 or product one. And similarly, the total profit from product two is 60 multiplied to x2 because 60 is, is what? 60 million is what you are uh, gaining by um, gaining from one ton of product two. Okay, and the number of tons to be produced is x2, so we will multiply to get the profit from product 2. When you combine them, when you add them, you get the total profit, right? and that has to be maximized. So, what exactly should be the value of x1 and x2 so that profit will be maximized? That's the idea. We have several constraints. We have working hours constraint, and the total number of working hours used for product 1 and product 2 is equal to 30x plus 20x. 30x1 plus 20x2 has to be less than uh, 2700 hours. Okay, so how do we come, come up with 30 and 20? Well, 30 hours is taken for one product, right? And 20 hours is taken for uh, product two, right? Product one, uh, to make product one, you need 30 hours. To make product uh, two, you need 20 hours. So when you uh, combine them, uh, you it has to be less than 2700 hours because that's the maximum number of hours available. Similarly, for the man hours, we'll just you know use the same equation, same uh, uh, way of formulating. Well, we have five hours taken for uh, product one and 10 hours taken for product two, and that summation or product sum, some product should be less than 850 because that's the maximum available to us. Okay, remember x1 and x2 are number of products, number of tons of products uh, 1 and product 2. Okay, and this you want to multiply with the respective uh, number of hours taken uh, for each one of these and then you will get the total, right? Okay, and the final constraint is that uh, the total units to be produced should be uh, less, uh, should be greater than or equal to 95. So x1 plus x2 the sum of x1 and x2 should be greater than 95. So that's the third constraint. So we have three constraints and one, and uh, the objective function is there. So putting all together uh, and considering all the uh, you know information given to us, we have this problem in place. We have to maximize uh, profit, and the profit function is is 20x plus 60x2. X1 and x2 are the decision variables. Decisions variables are the variables to be found out from optimization. So we want to know what exactly is the value of x1 and x2. You want to know the actual values, right? And we have constraint. Okay, the first constraint is on the working hours or man hours, which is 30x1 plus 20x2 has to be less than or equal to 2700. Then we have, uh, you know, machine hours. We have 5x1 plus 10x2 uh, less than or equal to 80 to 850 uh, because that's the total number of machine hours available to us and then the third one is the sum of that should be less than or equal to 95 
and the third uh, the last constraint is that number of hours cannot be uh, negative right it can either be zero or more it has to be uh, a, a positive or zero so that these are the constraint these are the four constraint and uh, we have to uh, use uh, some sort of an algorithm to find out given this constraint what maximizes the value of g or value of profit okay so we are interested in finding the value of x1 and x2 so what value of x1 and x2 maximizes g given this constraint are satisfied so none of the constraints should be dissatisfied or none of this constraint will be you know ignored while maximizing g so this is a constraint optimization okay and remember this is maximization problem that can be uh, a minimization problem also had it been cost we would have minimized since it is a profit we are trying to maximize okay so that's the idea so how do we solve this uh, in r now in, in order to solve this in r we'll be needing a package called um, lp solved okay okay um, and as, as you know for any uh, r package you need to first uh, install it and then load it so that's what you are going to do so just use uh, the cram mirror uh, and install this package and also load this package onto your session all right so we'll do this now uh, okay i'm going to show you the screenshot of the uh, you know the r code and you can uh, use this code to do it on your own and i highly recommend that you know uh, in order to be able to uh, understand it well you do it by yourself use this code that is given uh, on the screen and you will, you will be able to uh, understand it better so we'll first load this package after installing it and then we'll define some of the parameters that we have with us so here is the objective function so objective function has 20 x1 plus uh, you know 60 x2 so we create uh, a matrix with 20 and 60 and we call that as object under uh, dot fun uh, so that objective function of this short form of objective function and you can give any name okay just have a matrix as such and then you have uh, you put you do the same thing for constraint as well okay so we have a matrix um, for constraint uh, as well okay so we have got three constraints right the first constraint has the coefficient value 30 and 20 and the second one has 5 and 10 and the third one is 1 and 1 so we'll put that in the uh, in a matrix form okay in the uh, column and, and, and row form and you might wonder how is that going to recognize the first equation the second equation third equations given that we have only two decisions variable x1 and x2 and we have defined that here itself because the number of decisions variable will always be equal to the number of you know the uh, the number of coefficients okay so now it knows that there are two distance variables okay so if you have two distance variable it always going to take two the next two and the next two as the equations okay so it is very clear okay it is understandable it's very logical it's something that you do not have to tell r it always uh, you know gets it by uh, by itself Okay, and we have uh, constraints and constraint signature would be a, uh, important, okay, C constraint direction rather. So, uh, it would either be uh, less than equal to or greater than equal to, okay. And how many of them are less than equal to? So, this is less than equal to uh, and all three are uh, less than equal to, right? All three are less than equal to, I think. Um, All right, so I think this should be uh, less than equal. That seems to be a mistake. Anyway, so just uh, check it out. Um, I mean, I might have made a mistake here, but um, yeah. So that's the idea. So I'm sure the idea is uh, clear. Okay. Now in the third one, you just put uh, the uh, the right hand side value. Okay, the constraint values here. Right here, it is 2,700. It's 950. And we have got 95. So that you put in another uh, matrix. So 
the right hand side of the equations we just put it one place okay now we have the three uh, parameters in place we have objective function we have constraint and we have the values in the right side of the constraint and we have all the direction of the constraint now using these four variables that we have defined we can pass on these variables to the package lp as the function lp and it is going to solve for us okay so this is a maximization problem so we need the first argument is uh, double quote max so that shows it's a maximization problem then we give the objective function then we give the constraint then we give the direction of the constraint and then we give what is there in the right hand side of the constraint that means the uh, the boundary values right we call that as a boundary values we give that and when all these parameters are given uh, or uh, you know are uh, used as part of uh, you know the optimization we will get the values of x1 and x2 so that's the objective for us that's the uh, main intention of doing these optimizations now um, the information that was given uh, already to this function is defined prior to this now you cannot you know solve this without defining the uh, you know parameters so you first have to define these parameters with the given information so the best way to do is to first use your notebook and define your problem so you cannot directly go and you know write your code i mean you can always do that but it's always easy to uh, it's much easier to you know write it on your notebook and then write your code that's easy you, otherwise you you might make a mistake like you know i have made one all right now when you run this code um, you get your solution right away so you know we have run this code and the solution to these problems are x1 and x2 right and x1 is 20 and x2 is 75 okay now if you go back to the problem and test it out you will see that all constraints are met all constraints are satisfied you won't find any constraint to be violated okay now one of the constraints we can check is that the num total number of products um, produced for product 1 and product 2 should be greater than or equal to 95 when you uh, add them 75 plus 20 is exactly 95 so that constraint is satisfied right similarly if you can check other two constraint it is also satisfied uh, another constraint that is satisfied is the both are positive so that's uh, quite uh, you know clear to us all right so solution is very clear to us now we you know we can tell the industry or the factory that look given the constraint if you want to um, uh, you know if you want to maximize your uh, profit you need to uh, produce 75 uh, tons of product one 75 tons for uh, uh, product one and 20 tons for product two okay so these are the solutions uh, this is the solution uh, for this problem now same can be extended for many other reasons right uh, you could take advertisement spending right uh, you have a you know problem where whether you should spend how much money you should spend for advertisement on facebook um, or twitter okay if you're working for advert advertisement firm you can use this uh, as one of the problem uh, many times you would be uh, you know coming across cases that where you know a bank uh, would ask you to find out what should be the optimal uh, interest rate that you should charge for you know the, let's say three different products uh, that the bank is, is selling okay so that could be one of the problem so there are several industry problems that can well be solved using this and simple to use there's a few lines of code but you can uh, solve very complicated problems uh, very sophisticated problems uh, using just few lines of code all right, so we have come to the last part of the session where we'll just talk about the real world problems. Okay, as I've already said, the LPP is uh, heavily used in many, uh, you know, problems uh, worldwide in manufacturing, in um, in aviation, uh, in supply chain, in in shipping industry, in military, uh, in government uh, actions. I mean, you cannot name an industry which doesn't use uh, optimizations, uh, and it's heavily used everywhere. And it's um, it's uh, has been there for you know over uh, 
you know many years in you know probably it, it was started during the second world war so it, it got popularity uh, in during the second world war when uh, mathematicians uh, formulated optimization problems for uh, you know a, a war strategy and so on so yeah so that's a different thing i can always read out uh, more about optimization or operation research uh, lpp on wikipedia as a good resource uh, to learn uh, the history of lpp and its uses so it can well be used in uh, supply chain to know what could be the optimal route uh, you know in supply chain the uh, the important part is uh, how to reduce the supply cost how to ensure that the efficient uh, supply of goods and services will be done with le with less cost okay so that is uh, one area where uh, you, you use lpp pricing analytics where you know you have multiple products and you need to know uh, what should be the uh, good price of these products or the quantity of the products so that you optimize the profit in finance and analytics you you talk about interest rate uh, uh, fixing interest rates and then you know combining different products and so on so this is where you use uh, finance uh, you know lpp uh, uh, linear programming uh, quite a lot marketing is where you know it has been used for a very long time you know marketing spend where you you know spend, you have a budget which is a constrained budget you have to use your budget in many different uh, marketing areas and the decision to to uh, you know spend uh, money on different areas of marketing is something that is done by uh, little programming advertisement is you know um, is also a new area especially the um, especially uh, in the social media advertisement is where you have many options you have twitter you have facebook you have youtube you have google many uh, you know options to choose from and in order to optimize your advertisement uh, spin and the profit out of it um, you can you can formulate a linear programming problem and solve it and find out an optimal solutions thank you so much and please subscribe to us